And we all remember we don't belong not here. <laughs> we don't right, belong yes, here. I remember. No one's ever gonna let that down. <laughs> we, don't belong, we don't belong. We don't belong here, Andy. It should be here. Army, welcome back to our channel, Baby B Army Hearts to Hearts. I am Ruth. And I'm Nicole. And Baby B Army, we are back at it again with another BBB fan story. And we have Kato for today's oh, episode. It's me. I've never been here before, as we all know, ever, <laughs> ever in the history. <laughs> I know. We've been dying to get you on the show. Like, Right, right. I'm like so famous. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you have been famous, especially when it comes to like getting fans on and stuff and having a group of fans. You've been like the key player to all of those videos. So. <laughs> <laughs> It is finally nice to have you on individually <laughs> and have and hear and get to know you and your BBB stories. So we're excited for that. And for those of us who are watching and listening, Kata is internationally. She is not from the state. So ha, hello, time zones. <laughs> yes, which is why it's very dark right now. <laughs> we just appreciate you working with, you know, the different time zones and everything, though. Like we greatly appreciate that. I mean, of course, like, You're such a trigger. I, love to do this. <laughs> I know you and I don't want you to get up like at 5 a.m. either. So <laughs> that's when we have coffee, coffee. <laughs> pumpkin spice coffee, Nicole. Ooh, I will nice. have peppermint mocha coffee. Okay, she doesn't like pumpkin spice, she doesn't like pumpkin spice, but okay, whatever. <laughs> I know I'm a weird child. So, our very first question for you, Kata, is how did you discover Black Veil Brides? So, I made notes as we you figured. All... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we all know I'm a bit lost sometimes. <laughs> I first discovered BVB around 2012. I was a really big Michael Jackson fan, like, I was a huge fan. <laughs> I see you smiling. That's good. I love Michael Jackson. <laughs> That's a love the king of pop. Rest in peace. <laughs> yes. And I've been a fan of Michael Jackson forever. So my I got a friend like through a fan fiction site. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we started talking and she told me about BBB that she really liked them. And I was like 14 at the time. So it was, I don't know. I looked them up and <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> Because I was like, what? what, what's happening? What is this angry music? I wasn't really into, into like heavier music back then. But I did like the Rolling Stones because of my dad. So I was like in the rock genre, but not like metal. And then I like, I don't know, I forgot about them for a while. And then like at the end of 2014, 2015, uh, I found them again because I started being a fan of Tokyo Hotel, which is a German like rock band. <laughs> I'm sorry. Childhood memory unlocked Tokyo Hotel. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I mean, same. <laughs> and the fandom and BVB and the BVB fandom are kind of intertwined sometimes because I think because of the aesthetic and the music. And then I, I don't know, I kind of liked this heavier music back then. I entered my emo phase, like just like just right down in there. Um <laughs> And yeah, then I rediscovered BBB and I really, really liked them. And I was like, well, they're not scary at all. They're actually pretty fun. <laughs> There's a German teenager like magazine. I don't know any US equivalents, but the German magazine was called Bravo. And it's a pretty popular one. And there were BBB posters in there like around 2013. And I recently found them again. I was like, oh, right. <laughs> That's so random. I am jealous because like the teenage mag at least at least for Colorado, the teenage magazines here are literally for like people who are fans of Justin Bieber. And yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like those teen pop magazines like Taylor yeah. Swift, Justin Bieber, Jonas Brothers, Demi Lovato, Selena Gomez and stuff. Like all those Disney character singers, Miley yeah. Cyrus and stuff. Yeah. Like there was Which nothing. I was so confused. <laughs> Wait, there was a BBB one in yours though? Yes. Like, <laughs> what? How I am I don't know why. <laughs> Here we have like these team pop Disney stars, rock and rollers. I know German is yeah. yeah. Apparently, but they never reappeared again. Sadly, that is weird. So you you 
found them at first in 2012 and I know you said that you saw a photo of them and thought they were scary so you technically I feel like entered a little beyond the set the world on fire era you were looking at like those kinds of photos when they were all decked out in their yes. hardcore glam rock and roll yes. outfits yeah and my friend was like oh you know Andy Beersack and I'm like no who's that and she's like oh he's so hot you need to look at this picture and I'm like Ooh. <laughs> But then, I mean, here we are. Like, it's, it's not like that anymore. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> but we still sip for him, like those recent photos he posted. Oh my f- god! <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> what would you say your all-time favorite song by Black Phil Brides is? And you are allowed a top three. I'm not gonna be that mean. <laughs> <sighs> um, so that was a question where I really didn't know <laughs> uh, what the f- to say because, like. For me, it changes with my mood often. Like I listen to a song and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I forgot about it. Like I haven't listened to it in such a long time and I really missed it kind of. And then there's another song and another song and it just, I don't know, there's a lot of them. I mean, all of them almost. Um, but I was thinking long and hard and uh, my top three would be We Don't Belong because... I just really connect that with sitting on the bus, being 16 and deep. I was like, I don't belong here. (laughs) But it was like, on a very serious note, it was actually a a song that really got me through school many times. So that. And then recently I texted Ruth that I rediscovered Sons of Night. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I was thinking about when we did that other episode and we talked about Sons of Night at some point. And I was like, I didn't I haven't thought about it in such a long time recently I listened to it again it's so good and I'm so sad that it's not on Spotify it's only available if you got like at least in the states here the best buy version CD I don't know how it was in Germany for you guys I don't know I don't know I got the album after it came out like a year later or something Uh, yeah it's not on my CD so damn good though and that's why it just makes me laugh going back when Andy was telling us yeah we don't know what we were doing with that song we were just kind of putting stuff together and thought it sounded bad I'm like but it turned out so epic right Right? and like they didn't even have to try they didn't (laughs) they just need to like for shows and stuff their encores all their bonus songs smoke and mirror sons of night and stuff they just got to do that, I That's, that. they just have to <laughs> i need to do that honestly surprise yeah, yeah. everyone like ha ha you guys thought we didn't know how to play these songs where well, you're in for a treat <laughs> and then my third song was the wicked one because mm-hmm. i wanted to put one of the more recent songs there because especially for the phantom tomorrow i can't choose ever like what song is my favorite because <laughs> i love them all i feel like the wicked one in the phantom tomorrow is a very underdog i will admit mm-hmm. sorry bbb and stuff it's not my go-to song when it comes to that album like i listen to it but i'm just not like in mm, with it like the other ones i don't know why for me it's just the i really love that andy's like his his, his, his range is really really right. big in that song and i really love listening to that he's improved so much mm-hmm. it's incredible i think with his vocals in that song too it's literally like you know how you go oh they're telling a story like yeah they're telling a story but he's literally singing you the story yes and that's what i like about yes. it it's really amazing it's beautiful that's my top three but I love all of the songs, literally. It was, I took a very long time to choose. So now going into album. Out of all the- of the beautiful albums they have created over the years, you have to pick one now, Kata. Which one is your favorite? Just torture. It's torture. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't write down anything for that, so I really need to think. I think it's it's a tie, and I it's it's been said before, like by other fans. I think for me, it's a tie between We Stitch and uh, Phantom Tomorrow. Oh no, not We Stitch. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Wretched and Divine. Sorry. <laughs> so I really love both of them, especially because they're like really, really strong concept albums, and I really enjoy just the story and everything that happens around these albums, like with. Wretched and Divine that there was a movie and all of these like I don't know little details and like the Phantom Tomorrow the same thing and for me the Phantom Tomorrow kind of really I don't know when I listened to it for like the second time I had to cry because I just love the thought of like BVB being I don't know happy again as a band and 
it just sounded like they were having fun and like they were all in it like with their soul and it it just made me so happy <laughs> so yes it's those two albums and i mean the story is absolutely incredible i mean i can't hate you for choosing two concept albums because those are my tattoo pop albums can i hurt your brain a little bit more oh gosh okay <laughs> okay <laughs> which concept album do you love more why would you do this to her? So I asked this question to both Kaylee and Ruth. And I just, in your opinion, since you do love those two albums, like in your mind, which concept album just did it better for you? You can play the fifth. That's what I did when Nicole <laughs> asked us this question. <laughs> because Lonnie is on it, I have to take the Phantom Tomorrow. Because it's just like, I love Wretched and Divine for everything that it is. But Lonnie... <laughs> The long dog. The long dog. <laughs> Low no, me. Yeah. You were so real for that. <laughs> <laughs> the bass sounds so good now. So I am going to ask you my signature question here. I must know, which album do you love more? Is it the We Stitch album or the remastered Restitch album? So for that, I will say again, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> um, because like we stitch these wounds, obviously, like it's just nostalgia for me. Like it's just it just hits the feels <laughs> just a different <laughs> way. <laughs> um, but like for just the technicalities and the sound, restitch is just it just sounds nicer, I yeah. feel. And it's just like bigger. I don't. I feel like uh, restitch these wounds kind of sounds finished in that regard. Like it sounds like something. I don't know. It sounds like they could finally. They finally had the assets to do what they wanted to do back then. Like what the plan was, and it just sounds so <laughs> epic. But again, it, like it depends on how I'm feeling. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, I was gonna say, but I like that though. I like the fact because it is true. It is hard to pick between at least in my opinion, it's hard to pick between both albums. I know for some people it's it's easy, but I do agree with you. If you're feeling nostalgic, you want to go to that, the very original OG one. But if you're wanting the technicality, the new one, I like that answer. And also Mortician's Daughter, the new one is so f***ing beautiful. Yes, it Thanks. slays. Did an amusing job with it. So Yes. <laughs> what has been your favorite memory with them? This can be in person, in concert, or virtually online through social media apps that that was again hard <laughs> because it turns out that I, I met like bbb and also like andy by himself i met them so many times now which is kind of insane i wrote down all of the times and uh I saw them in concert in 2015 again, so that one's special, be, uh, or for the first time, so that one's special because it was the first time ever. And uh, it was in Anaheim. I think it was at the end of the Black Mass tour. I'm not sure. It was after Warp tour, definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there was a QA and a in like 2016 when Andy had his uh, Andy Black thing, like with the Musicians Institute. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I got to talk to him. And it was, well, on one hand, it was a very hilarious night. Like, <laughs> if if anybody was there that night and remembers the staircase friends, that was me and my two friends. <laughs> it was really awkward because uh, my friend, so one of my friends, uh, they're like, <laughs> they're like almost two heads smaller than me. And uh, they were really like, they also wanted to ask a question, like both of my friends went up to the mic with me because I was kind of anxious. And uh, then like my smaller friend, <laughs> uh, they were like, I don't know, they didn't really get to the point and it was kind of funny. And Andy, like how he is kind of made like light of that situation. It was, it was very funny in hindsight. <laughs> and also while I was there, and uh, then my other friend is like in the middle of that one friend and me. So it was just like <laughs> the staircase. And then Andy called us the staircase friends. Um, <laughs> and it was very iconic. And the funniest thing was when I uh, when I had a meet and greet with Juliet, like over uh, Zoom, mm -hmm. like, I think it was 2021, 
when she came out with uh, Lilith. Um, and it was so funny because like she herself started saying, oh, Kata, it's you from like that night. And I was like, I didn't even know you were there. <laughs> like, how did you remember? <laughs> That was apparently that was a very iconic night for all the <laughs> parties involved. <laughs> but yeah, the, I have to say that one is my favorite because it was so like wild and funny. And like I got to ask Andy like about anxiety and things. And he said, um, just basically like just try to make your biggest fear your biggest tr strength. And that's what I'm still trying to like carry with me. And it really helps. So that was beautiful. Sadly, there's no video footage of it anymore because they it kind of went on for a long time and they cut all of it out, oh. which was really sad. But uh, yeah, and then like just the recent years uh, were also really amazing, especially the Freiburg show last year. And there were like other instances like with uh, especially when Andy came out with Andy Black and I was in Los Angeles at that time. So it was uh, kind of, it was very easy for me to go to these events. And I was so thankful to my host mom for driving me all the time. So shout out to her. <laughs> and that was, it was really great. And uh, yeah, like when they had the online thingies, I didn't do the BBB one, but the Andy's book signing one. And that was also really amazing. They're just so nice. <laughs> I wish I would have done it, but due to work, I couldn't. So, so I experience don't know. more to come. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. I mean, I have VIP for the Cologne show. So when is that again? Uh oh, it's right here. Um, November sixth, six six. Ooh, it'll be here <laughs> before you know it. Yeah, I fast know. enough though. <laughs> more it's, memories it's, to add. Yes, and I'm really looking forward to it. So this next question that we have, we know that it can be really deep. So we just ask that you take as much time as you need. But how has Black Veil Brides impacted your life? As I said before, it really, when I found out about them and when I like started kind of listening to bands like that, it was, I think a lot of fans have that in common in the BBB army that school wasn't really fun. And um, I was struggling a lot, like it was in 10th grade and I literally had almost no friends in school and it was very lonely and very, uh, yeah, just I felt very like left out and annoying and shit. because like when I'm excited about something, I talk about it a lot and I think that that can scare people off sometimes. So when I found PVB, I just really liked, like I started watching like the Brian Stars interviews and all of that. And I found like, I found Andy to be so relatable in a way that like, he also got really passionate about the things that he likes. And he like over the past years, he's mentioned his social anxiety a lot. And I relate to that a lot, especially also like, like the stories he tells about him going grocery shopping and that shit. And like sh that, that happens to me too. Like I'm very awkward sometimes. And it just really helped to like have music that I enjoyed and to know that it comes from a place of somebody actually like talking about their feelings and being open about their own insecurities and like passions. And that really helped me. Um, it also, BVB just kind of gave me a lot of joy and something to hold on to, especially in times where I even like outside of school didn't feel good because I was in an emotionally abusive relationship at the time. Sorry. And um, it, they just really helped me to find my self-esteem again after that ended and because I felt like I was left with nothing because I didn't really know what I enjoyed anymore and what I liked because I was being told what to do and what not to do. And um, yeah, I don't know. And forced into like, I don't know, just, it, it wasn't good. And um, it, it just really helped to know, okay, I like this music and it's not a bad thing for me to like 
only wear black and like be into bands like that and to, into music like that and um just kind of the whole message that bvb gives of like you're enough the way you are and you're great the way you are just really helped me especially also like with identity things because i like i identify as gender fluid and i didn't know really i was just saying like, gender is just like what the f is it anyways <laughs> I don't know, it was great to have a band that just accepts people the way they are and that kind of I mean BBB themselves struggles like in their in their own field. So it just kind of made sense for me as somebody who felt very alone in that time. And as I said before, like what Andy said about anxiety and like actually just turning your fear into your strength and like making that something that like just kind of finding that self-esteem to actually do something you're afraid of that just really really helped me i want to give you a hug so i know that it's important you know when it comes to relate to like the music that the band puts out but I also think it's incredibly important to relate to the artist behind the music too. I know that they do write songs for all the outcasts, for all the people that just have ever felt the way that you have felt, the way that I have felt, the way that Ruth has felt, the way that any of us fans have ever felt. But when we can relate to the artist as well, I just, I think it it goes above and beyond the music too. And I am just so, like, I'm just so glad that, you know, once again, that Black Phil Brides continues to do this to fans, where they're, they're there without having to be there. I know you said you felt alone, but I'm sure when you put those headphones in, you didn't feel alone anymore. Yeah, yeah. And that's the greatest thing ever. Just, like, this kind of escapism, just finding, like, also just, like, all of the things that they give us to look forward to. Like, you know that... I don't know the tour is going to happen or like maybe there's going to be a new album or just anything basically just anything creative that they put out or like the Andy show every week is also something that I really look forward to because it's fun and um yeah especially like as you said when you can also relate to the artist behind the music too because it kind of gives it a whole I don't know it makes it more real in my opinion and not just because if I read a book, for example, I can escape too. Like, it's perfect for that. But, like, to know that there's a person out there who actually feels that way is just a lot more comfort comforting in that way. Yeah, especially if it's a person you're looking up to, especially. Yes. And I almost feel like <clears throat> with them as a band and Andy writing these songs and working on these songs, like, yeah, we can look up to them. They're there as a person there to comfort us. But also with them writing those songs touches other fans like us who have been through the similar experiences that you have shared with us and I know we talked through the dms about our experience of unfortunately emotional abuse when a toxic relationship I myself was in that but I also feel like with those songs like we can bond over that and we can help each other throughout the tough times or even the triggers or anxiety when it gets too much it's just like BBB writes these songs and stuff and not only are they there for us but it also brings other people from different countries to connect to each other and stuff and also be there for each other yes definitely I think we can really be proud of ourselves for like finding a community mm -hmm. and like feeling good in a community and finding our own self-esteem again yeah. yeah and just feeling feeling like we belong and also to all those fans who are listening and watching who's been through trauma you are valid you're not alone and it's not your fault <laughs> yes yes and it's okay to feel awful about the things that happen and it's okay to cry and feel really awful next question is top tools so out of curiosity do you have any tattoos i just have a rose it's oh, okay a one liner <laughs> um but i don't have any bbb sadly yet do you ever think you're going to get some down the future? <laughs> yes, actually. Because uh, he drew a little bat for me. Aww. And I really want to get that cat tattooed. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yes. I just, it's it's been years now since I wanted it, but I'm not good at making appointments, appointments <laughs> like that. 
not good at planning. <laughs> it's time if you've been thinking about it for years, it's time to put it arm, chest, uh, somewhere. So just need to find a space that is visible and also not that painful. Uh, <laughs> <tolerance> <laughs> very low. <laughs> I vote back because I, I have two on my back and it honestly just feels like a little back. <laughs> Like, I yeah, literally, literally told my artist, like, I could fall asleep right now. And only said, he's just said this. It's like, as long as you're breathing, we're good. I was thinking about on my arm again because I, I'm, I'm like, I'm very thin. So, like, everywhere on my body is basically <laughs> thin and bone. So, That's I need where... to find somewhere where there's more. <laughs> In my opinion, Nicole can have a different opinion because she has more tattoos than I do. <laughs> I feel like the arms are probably a safe bet for like pain tolerance yeah. especially forearms and upper arms too unless you want the ditch that's a different story so <laughs> right now wrist. I'm thinking like <laughs> yeah, the wrist I mean the wrist doesn't hurt that bad actually yeah so. but I do yeah. agree with Ruth arms are the safest bet if you don't mm-hmm. want to like be have if you're if you're scared of pain the arms are nothing nice good <laughs> doing that again <laughs> there's also a wonderful thing in the tattoo community called numbing cream yeah i heard i heard about that it works wonders yes yes i think andy mentioned it for the eagle on his chest which also is absolutely insane in my opinion that he did that but it looks (laughs) great (laughs) yes i was gonna say don't be afraid to use numbing cream don't let anyone or any tattoo artist make you feel like overusing it i'm sorry like it's total bs if they're making you feel like oh this you're a wimp and stuff you deserve the pain and stuff i'm like what the (laughs) what the f- like? <laughs> that's the whole point of a tattoo is to feel the pain it's yeah, like well, yeah i understand I that <laughs> but some people who literally will, like physically pass out like they need it bat tattoo in the future of andy's butt <laughs> definitely i mean it's a very small one and a simple one it's so cute. i like Should... it though so moving on to blackville bride concerts you have clearly been to quite a bit then how many have you been to strictly blackville bride's concerts <laughs> i actually wrote that down okay so... excellent <laughs> Uh, it was the 2015 concert in Anaheim, which I think was kind of separate from the Black Mass then, because yeah, I think there it were might different have been. Band, ba- bands just, playing. So. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me, because I know they did, like, one Halloween weekend, they did a short one over somewhere in LA, so it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then there was the first Andy Black show he ever did in LA. That was really cool, like, you if you pre-ordered the album you could go to the concert it was like 100 people it was so small and so cool very like very nice lucky (laughs) and juliet was on stage it was so great (laughs) she didn't sing but like she but she was there (laughs) she's there was there (laughs) well technically during i got to like uh see the american satan filming like when they had the uh, the concert scenes oh so maybe i can i can count that as a technical concert <laughs> yeah i would yep that was really cool and uh then 2018 in cologne for the um god resurrection tour mm, nice. with asking yes asking really cool. alexandria yeah that's when they played lost it all <laughs> yes yes <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it was it was such a crazy concert because I was like I was sick and like I was mostly over my cold but I still yeah. like, had a very sore throat and felt like very tired so I like BVB was playing after asking and um I made it through like all of the sets and like the the yeah. band was absolutely amazing fun fact the singer of that first band which was called to the rats and wolves and i really liked that band i've seen them twice um that singer is now singing in electric callboy which i don't oh, know i love I electric callboy me too me too. Love them. me too they're amazing i see them in february <laughs> oh my god oh have fun i'm so excited for you yes thank you <laughs> anyways but it was that singer and that was amazing and oh yeah i was sick <laughs> um 
I have ADHD, by the way, if, if anybody knows. <laughs> you're good, you're good, you're good. But yeah, I, I made it through both of those sets. And then like before BBB was playing, the breaks between the bands yeah. just felt longer and harder. And I was like, God, I can't anymore. And then BBB started playing and I just went so wild. Like I forgot anything. And, Spike of uh, adrenaline. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it was insane. And my two friends... Uh, who were with me that night like they were kind of tired and they like went a bit to the side and I like went to the front and then after the concert I came back and I was just like I was just so fucking done with everything I was just like I need water <laughs> and a tea and my voice was like just as oh, if I just smoked two packs of cigarettes it was amazing I feel like we've all been there in one of like a BBB show or any type of concert. Like we were like, okay, we have to make it through these amount of like opening acts and stuff to the main band and stuff. And then we're like, okay, we're so tired. Speck of adrenaline. Okay, that's done. Yeah. I'm out. I want to go home and pass out. <laughs> yep, honestly, honestly. Um, and then the it was the Freiburg show. And can we mean uh, can we can we count like the online concerts too, right? Yeah, I yeah they were amazing too yes they were um, then the freiburg show happened after which i got sick again <laughs> because we got rained on really bad and i was camping with my friend because hotels were so expensive <laughs> Ooh. yeah that will do and it then, that will do it yeah it was great i mean it was fun but it was very very cold it was june but the rain was really cold right. and everything was wet after that so on that meet and greet picture, I, I'm just, I'm soaked. <laughs> but it was great too, because it was a very tiny show. And I, I like those the most. Uh, then the last time was the London show, which was absolutely amazing. We are but jealous. I we are yes. jealous we are very jealous you got to experience oh yeah by the way i told nicole it was black and fetty <laughs> yeah oh, oh, i am hey hey now i told <laughs> ruth though it, that that makes it even better that it was black and fetty but all uh, we you could see why i thought it was gold though right honestly yeah it looks Thank gold, you. It gold yeah it definitely does i uh like i i Tape like I took two of the confetti things yes. in my diary. Yes, yes. I, I would have done the same, honestly. Yes, because yes. it was oh, great. The fact that you were there at the London show, the la yeah, that was the last stop on that leg, right? Or yeah, yeah. I remember most of them just being so sick and everything, and it, like it was honestly, bad. Yeah, I mean, and, Jake couldn't even go to the meeting. No, I saw yeah. that. I'm like, oh no, like they all got hit hard, but the fact that they were able maybe adrenaline again able to find the strength to film that amazing music video and everything else that you got to experience that again with little czar hello oh my god it was so Stage. <laughs> like we're so lucky lucky duck like we were just like oh when i when, um... <laughs> it was so beautiful <laughs> i'm so jealous but so happy for you it's and amazing you got that experience Thank you. It was so fun. When it comes to their war paint on their old eras, like Set the World on Fire or We Set These Moons, even uh, Wretched and Divine, which one is your favorite war paint? Um, I'd have to go with Set the World on Fire, Andy, because the the spikes are so fucking cool. Yes. It's so fun. And also Jinx's war paint, like with the... Um, <sighs> eyes and yep, it looks yes. so cool so i'm very much a fan of that today i'm kind of channeling goth viking so <laughs> I, I was about but, to say you're giving viking vibes to me yeah i'm That's playing cool. assassin's creed valhalla right now it's it's just i it's i'm just too into it <laughs> <laughs> totally fine <laughs> yeah but it's it's i love the like set the world on fire aesthetic it's so fun it's it's yeah it's definitely rock and roll for sure. Yeah. yeah. But I also love what they got going on like in the more recent things. It's it's like it's so pretty. Like it's yeah. so gorgeous. Now we're going into eras. Out of all of the eras that Blackfoot Brides has done, which one is your favorite? Which one would you want to live in of like out of all of them? Had to think about that again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard one. <laughs> so usually I'm kind of into what's happening right now because it's so exciting. Um, I also had that like when they came back with the night, that was really, really f 
Mas, by the way, Andy's makeup was so f***ing beautiful. <laughs> and also, like, with the Phantom tomorrow, and I'm really excited about what's happening right now. So I can't really choose, but if I had to, I I'm not good with choices, if anybody <laughs> knows it. <laughs> I'd have to go with the with the Phantom tomorrow, I think, because of all of everything that was happening yeah. around it. I really like the concept of that and all of the music videos and the whole aesthetic of everything, like with the red and black. Mm -hmm. It was just gorgeous. So I'll I'll have to take that one. How has been your experience with the Baby Me Army so far? <laughs> really positive. I mean, like when I got into the fandom, like around 2015-ish, like up until two years ago around that time I didn't really have any contact with many people or like a lot of the people that I like maybe dm'd on instagram like kind of I don't know kind of left the fandom at some point it was always kind of sad um when when I don't know when when they just say well I'm not really into that anymore and I'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> two years was it two years ago I don't even know anymore like I started texting Cassidy because like I really love her artwork shout out to her <laughs> and uh it was just fun to talk about art and then I got in touch with you two and it was I just appreciate all of the people I'm really talking to <laughs> wait that was weird I really appreciate the people I'm talking to <laughs> there there you go <laughs> It's good. I'm glad you've been having nothing but positive experiences with the army yeah. and also meeting them in person during concerts when you can. You just need to come to the States now for that big meetup and stuff. Yes. I'll bring all the Polish taco polish I have oh here. My God. Cool. I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> I took mine off. I, I meant to. I would really love that. It would be so much fun. So our very last question that we have, and it's not even BVB related at all. It's just if you have any questions for Ruth and I, and they don't have to be, once again, Blackville Brides related. So I was thinking, I feel like everything, every every answer is with me saying, I was thinking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I'm thinking a lot. Um, <laughs> That's really fine. Your brain is working. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's great, right? <laughs> And uh, when, like last year, when I know two years ago, when I was doing uh, like when I was looking for an apartment, uh, somebody where I was applying, they asked me um, what my favorite vegetable was. And I found that question so weird that I really wanted to ask you that. It was so funny. <laughs> so what's your favorite vegetable? <laughs> I can only think of two right now for me. <laughs> Say yours. <laughs> <laughs> I am a well I grew up with vegetables growing up so I mean I guess I kind of had I mean I would have to say either broccoli or green beans I love those two Ooh. yeah but say don't green beans have seeds I, just, I don't know <laughs> that's what I'm saying like everything has a seed that's why I'm like how you can't tell me it's a fruit like, I, so are they just like I, I no broccoli then <laughs> See, I, I know. I like I broccoli. I like green beans, but I also like radishes. But like, I know technically they're not a vegetable. See, what the I heck? Know. I don't know because it's in my. I don't even know like are potatoes a vegetable? Oh yeah, because they're they're nightshades. Yeah, basically. yeah. So it's like okay, okay. What? I okay. I'm just gonna say, as of my point of view, in my opinion, as a vegetable, it is broccoli and green and green beans. Okay, those are my two vegetables i'll take that okay <laughs> yeah i, find it I so can't strange. tell what's a vegetable anymore in life don't get me wrong i do love green beans but now that you just here's the thing i didn't consider this to be a vegetable onions i will just eat an onion i love onions they're oh so my good. God. like raw That's an unpopular yeah. opinion. like an apple i love onions literally I I like my mom I I've, I, I, I learned I something new. Like they're a snack. What? I've never yeah. met a person who liked onions. Like who? Onions are like, so I love not onions. Just onions like, I like part of them with onion. like oh, like olive oil and seasoning them and putting like in other foods, but not by itself. Yeah. I I can't eat it. Yeah, I'll eat it by itself. I'll eat it mixed in with everything. I put onions in everything. My husband actually gets annoyed. He's like, can we not put onions in this? I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I love onions. I didn't even think that they could be considered a vegetable, so I love that. Onions. 
I vote yes. either broccoli or green peas for me. Onions. Okay. Okay. I just think I would have to also go with broccoli. I don't eat it a lot, but I really love it. Is corn a vegetable? I would say so. Okay, and... then never mind. I'm changing my answer to corn then, because corn and broccoli, <laughs> those are my top two. Like those are good. Those are corn is really good. It's corn. A big yeah, corn. The most... It has to juice. It has to juice. <laughs> Army. Today's fan shout out goes to Preston Metal for Life. Um, their Twitter at is gonna be at PJ Metal Fan for Life. You have been such a loyal and dedicated fan of Black Veil Brides, and I just think the vest that you designed was so cool. All the Black Veil Bride patches that you have on there, I mean, they range from the OG days all the way up to their newest era, the Phantom Tomorrow, and with their morning EP as well, and I just, I think that you are just super cool. You're very supportive of Black Veil Brides online, you know, you're always standing up for them and for fans, and I just you know all of us greatly appreciate you just thank you for being a fan of black brides and thank you for supporting both ruth and i on this channel um we just can't thank you enough today's fan shout out goes to you well kata thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and just being first of all just being open with us and sharing everything so again just thank you so much and thank you for your patience so <laughs> no problem <laughs> um where can fans find you on the social media platforms <laughs> I'm basically only really active on Instagram. That's Applehead98. <laughs> that fun fact, that's a relic a re re relic, relic from uh, my Michael Jackson fandom days. Because <laughs> he used to be called Applehead. And I don't know. yeah, and I really liked that back then. And I still do. And now I just kind of, some of my friends call me Applehead now. <laughs> <laughs> Sticks with you now. Well, yes. <laughs> there you go, BBB Army. If you want to give Kata a follow on Instagram, her social uh, link will be in the description. Please go give her a follow. She creates beautiful artwork that she does share on her stories and posts. You are very, you're such a talented artist, honestly. Like it's it blow my mind of how talented you are when it comes to painting, oils, drawing, whatever medium you use. So you're very talented. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Uh, BBB Army, you can definitely find our uh, follow us on our social media platforms. All the links are in the description below. We do have a TikTok account where we put snippets. We have a Twitter account, individual Instagram accounts and stuff. Uh, but please go give us a follow. Uh, for those of us who did not know, um, we, our Google form is still up for anyone who wants to put their votes in on what is their favorite song from each album. Please uh, go ahead and fill that out because we will be definitely looking at the results of it for next week's video we are excited to see the results of it i did admit i took a sneak peek on some okay uh outcome for albums are different than what i expected but i'm excited to see the rest of it next for next week's episode so <laughs> i'm excited too <laughs> i know it's interesting to see where the army comes for their song we love, so we love the data we love the data yes <laughs> yes we do so uh <laughs> there will be a new episode next week to all fans who are going to the shows in the north america tour with vv and dark divine I, we hope you're having an amazing time. Uh, please hydrate, eat water, bring salty snacks. Double check the time for VIP and venue. Do not miss your VIP timing, please. Because I know some fans, unfortunately, have in the past. Double check everything. Also, oh. take your tickets. Yes. Don't take forget the tickets. Those tickets. So we are excited to see this new tour and how it's going to play out and everything. Uh, yes, that thinks that's all what I have to say. I think we're all good. We will see you guys next week. Once again, Kata, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you.